people started showing up to the shows. <laughs> I was playing a lot of coffee houses and um, I had a lot of friends who wanted to be musicians as well. And when I realized that, you know, what they were doing and what I was doing was starting to separate and I started realizing that, you know, the time and energy that I was putting into it was starting to pay off. It was, it was kind of a reality check and I said, wait a second, maybe I could make a living off of this, you know? So that's really when I, when I decided, I think it was in, two, I think it was 2001. I'd put out a, a bunch of demos and it was all kind of just messing around stuff and then it sort of hit me right around 2001 or 2002 that I could do it, you know, like for good. <laughs> I think you've got to really know who you're dealing with. Uh, it's really important not to just take help from anybody who offers it. Sometimes that help is, is uh, you know, damage in disguise. So uh, I've been pretty careful. It's all about judging the character and, and looking at a person and asking yourself, would I let this person come to my house for dinner? Would I want to have this person over to spend the night on my sofa bed? And if the answer is yes, then they'll probably be all right to work with. And on top of that, I think there's also the fact that I just don't read a lot of the reviews and I don't, I don't really, I try to not tune out the negative stuff that comes at me, but more just be aware of it on a, on a subliminal level as opposed to digging through and Google alerting myself on myself. I just, you know, you're going to disappear into your own brain if you do that too much. So I try to just let those people have their opinions and I got my opinions and, you know, I don't spend too much time online. <laughs> was one of the first guys we ever listened to as a band. I mean, when we were forming the band, one of our common denominators was JJ. And it's rare that, you know, I mean, I think a, a bunch of musicians from northern New York and Vermont would know anything about someone as, as legendary and, and kind of under the radar as he was. And at the same time, it was, it was the most obvious musician and, and one of the most exciting and inspirational sounds that we got. So last time we were here at Kane's, we played Cajun Moon as a, as a dedication to good old jiggers as we call them. And uh, I think, you know, it's more the idea that his, his creation and the music that he made was, uh, it made no assumptions. And it didn't try to be anything it wasn't. And it still continues to be. He's one of the most humble, quiet dudes. He'd rather hang out in Escondido and never take one phone call ever than, you know, be playing the fame game. So we respect him for that.